Before the financial crisis, the House approves the McCarthy-Biden debt ceiling agreement and sends it to the Senate. Congress is on track to approve additional borrowing only days before the government is anticipated to run out of money after the House enacted legislation late on Wednesday to execute the debt ceiling accord struck between President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Majorities in both parties supported the compromise which also satisfies the GOP demand to reduce non-defense discretionary spending over the next two years, and the package passed by a vote of 314 to 117. Democrats backed the bill 165 to 46, while Republicans supported it by a vote of 149 to 71. Democrats claimed responsibility for their role in advancing the measure. 52 Democrats joined with Republicans in an unusual procedural vote earlier in the day to keep the measure alive. The bill is objectionable, according to former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, but it also will avert an unprecedented default, which would cause devastation to America's families, she said. Even though the package fell short of conservatives' original goal of cutting expenditure by around $150 billion from this year to the next, McCarthy, a Republican from California, praised the plan's spending reductions. Tonight we're going to do something we haven't done before, McCarthy said. Tonight, we are going to vote for the largest savings in American history, over $2.1 trillion. That's what we're voting for. Every great nation that has overextended itself has collapsed. With the support of the House, the bill is now headed to the Senate, where Majority Leader Chuck Schumer earlier in the day vowed it would be debated, as soon as possible. Barring any objections from senators to moving rapidly, that vote is anticipated to happen this week. Asked about the viability of a Senate vote by Friday, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell told reporters, I can tell you what I hope happens. That we can finish this Thursday or Friday and soothe the country and soothe the markets. The final deal agreed over the weekend suspends the debt ceiling without a restriction until January 1, 2025 while also reducing non-defense expenditure to levels similar to fiscal 2022, restricting growth at 1% for the next two years. And proposing optional ceilings for the following four years. Additionally, it recovers some cash intended for the Internal Revenue Service and certain COVID-19 pandemic funds that were not yet spent. But shortly after the agreement was reached on Saturday night, several conservative Republicans voiced their opposition to it, 